Welcome back. Tom Hartman here with you. And I have been saying for some weeks now, uh, if you've been watching or listening to this program on a regular basis, you know this well, that what we are seeing played out right now has very little to do with Obamacare. It has very little to do with Republicans or Democrats. It even arguably has very little to do with billionaires and poor people. What it has to do with is two fundamentally different visions of America. One vision of America is the one by which this country was founded, where George Washington signed legislation into place establishing poor houses, where poor people could be fed, sheltered, housed, excuse me, clothed, and provided with free medical services. George Washington. And then John Adams did it. And then Thomas Jefferson did it. And then during the James Madison presidency, uh, Congress proposed that this should be done by the churches instead. And that was the first veto of the James Madison presidency. And he gave a long speech. Uh, you can read the veto message uh, online. It's fairly easy to find, where he said that this would establish a horrible precedent that caring for the poor is clearly a function of government and, and that government should not be doing it via the churches. So there's that traditional vision of America that there should be a social safety net, that, that, there's a, that there's a bottom through which we don't let each other fall, versus the libertarian vision of America that says, you're on your own, buddy. And that's why these guys are so afraid of Obamacare going into law, is if Obamacare goes into law, that's one step further into the, what you might call democratic socialist vision or, or regulated capitalism vision, as, a, as opposed to the laissez-faire libertarian vision of America. I really see this as a battle of worldviews. Nick Gillespie is with me. He's the editor-in-chief of Reason.com and Reason TV, co-author of The Declaration of Independence, How Libertarian Politics Can Fix What's Wrong with America, Reason.com, of course, the website. Hey, Nick, welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me, Tom, and also thanks for uh, recasting American history uh, with the founders as democratic socialists. That's, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's an interesting... Was it not true what I just said? Uh, well, I think the idea that uh, there is a social safety net that government might provide equating democratic socialism or even being anti-libertarian is a stretch, actually. Yeah, and I, well, I don't think tell me what I said that was wrong. Uh, what I'm saying is, is that the idea that you would uh, provide a social safety net for people is not the same thing as democratic socialism. It is not necessarily antithetical to libertarianism, at least not as I, I see it. And most important, it has nothing to do with opposition to Obamacare, which is actually, uh, you know, I, I mean, I can tell you right now that my opposition to Obamacare is not that it's going to work too well, but rather that it's going to increase everybody's costs over time and diminish everybody's uh, uh, social welfare. Well, if it does, then, and, then, and we will, then we will vote the bums out and we no, will change we it, will we not? No, we won't, though. We won't uh, because it's much more difficult to do that. Medicaid is a good example of a program where every state in the country, Medicaid is, uh, for listeners who are not um, certain of this, Medicaid is the government-provided health care for the poor uh, in all 50 states, it is either the highest or second highest budget item on every state's uh, every state in the country's budget. They spend more and more money on it, and it has terrible health outcomes for poor people. There are clearly better alternative ways to deliver health care. Well, let's talk about that for a second, if you want. I, 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 I'd rather keep this at thirty thousand feet, but uh, I can't just you know, no, no, let that go un unchallenged. First of all, the reason Medicare is exploding. Is because 32 years of Reaganomics has exploded poverty in the United States, and you know, and then the Great Bush Crash. What year did so, get so there are more people who have been thrown into the roles of the poor and thus qualifying for Medicare. Thus, you've got a problem, a programming crisis. Number one, number two, you've got all these Republican states that are not taking federal dollars for Medicare. And, and number three, and I think Wait, the most important thing, Medicaid, whether if you want to talk about whether Medicare is working or is good or is bad or whatever, is that over at United Healthcare, a for-profit insurance company, you've got Stephen J. Hemsley skimming a billion dollars off the top and putting it in his own personal pocket for his what five or seven homes and you know all around the world. Okay, and you've got over a hundred executives making over a million dollars a year. Medicaid um, is running on a three percent budget, and so you know it, it may not be perfect. But it's a hell of a lot better than this for-profit system that you guys push. Uh, no, actually, it isn't. Uh, and again, the point is, if you know, uh, even the Oregon study, which was widely touted as showing that Medicaid is a good idea, 
showed that there was no health benefit from being on, on, on Medicaid. So there, is a, there is a clear there, health there detriment to not few, having it. There are precious few uh, services, goods and services, when they are directly provided by the government or directly paid for by the government, that get better. Would it be better? And let me let me ask you this because so you'd rather have you'd rather have Blackwater running your local police department? No, no. What I'm saying is what I'm saying is is that do you agree with me? And I and, and this might be a, a point of actual uh, commonality. There should not be food stamps in America. We should not be demeaning and uh, uh, humiliating poor people by saying you're poor. So we're going to give you fake dollars that you can spend on certain types of food that we deem edible by poor people. Wouldn't it be better to give people cash assistance? as opposed to telling them what they have to pay for and where they have to go in order to buy it. If you did that, you would have, that would be the end of the program. Because if you did that, you would have people showing up at the, at the store and buying liquor and alcohol, and not everybody. It would be, you know, the small 2, 3, yeah, 4, 5 percent. And then the minute that happens, Fox News would be there with a camera crew, and it would be such a scandal, and that would kill the program. You know, come on, you're, you're, Nick, you can't be that politically naive. No, I'm, I'm not being naive at all. What I'm saying is, is that I, I think that we should, we should treat people who are... I think we should do what Thomas Paine proposed in Agrarian Justice, that everybody in the country should have a minimum income. Yeah, well, uh, no, you know what, actually, the whole point of a minimum income, the last great uh, kind of declaration of that actually came from Milton Friedman, the free market libertarian Nobel Prize winning economist, who floated it during the Nixon years. Well, it was uh, Hayek who said it, that, 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 it, that a country, you know, if, if for a country to function, it has to have a national health care system. It was no, Hayek. You know, no, but it doesn't, no, it has to have, uh, it, first off, it doesn't have to have a national health care system. Read Hayek. I, I, I'm, I should have printed the damn thing out for me, for you. I, I, I will, I can send it to you. But it's, uh, Frederick Hayek be, said, you, you might, you know, this is an appropriate function of government to, ha to um, run a national health care system. As long as we're talking about areas of commonality, I would be totally happy, and even people like Charles Murray of all, of all types have talked about, you know, give people a guaranteed minimum income, and then that's, that's the beginning and the end of transfer programs. But it would actually be much better because then you wouldn't have a system of, of nationalized or government-run health care versus private sector. Well, Switzerland is voting on that to the next month, you know. What's that? Switzerland's voting on that next month. Yeah, good. All I'm saying is... And, yeah. and, and Alaska does it to a certain extent. Uh, you know, when Sarah Palin have. was governor of Alaska, every year she wrote a check for a little over $2,000 to every man, woman, and child in the state. Yeah. And, and that and that was because they were what they were I'm simply saying, charging for the oil that was being pumped out of the ground in Alaska. Why don't we do this nationwide? Uh, now? I know I know very few libertarians who would be against that if it came with the proviso then that that gets rid of all other transfer programs, including things like Social Security or Medicare, health care for the old uh, to well. Well, in that case, it would have to be more like two thousand dollars a month instead of two thousand dollars a would, year. It would not be. It would not be. You know, basically, actually. A thousand dollars a month to each individual would raise everybody in the country to the uh, to uh, the poverty level, sure. and it would be cheaper than what we're doing now. It would end all kinds of bureaucratic nightmares and screw ups, and it would also give each individual more options and more choices to figure out what they what they actually. I don't think anybody in this country can live on twelve thousand dollars a year. Or I, uh, you, uh, you've got to be kidding me! If you're in a if there are three people in a household in an apartment and they're each making twelve grand a year, you couldn't live on that. I would have a hard the property line in America is basically around you know it's around eleven thousand dollars. It changes depending on the state and the area. It's more in Alaska and Hawaii, but that's the official government policy. Yeah, I don't think having a you know going back to the Victorian era as a model where we have a huge uh, class of working poor. Uh, a relatively small middle class and a small elite is a good vision. But Nick Gillespie, editor-in-chief of Reason.com. Thanks, Nick. Thank you. This is the Tom Hartman Program. We'll be back in just a moment. But which, which vision of America? I mean, we really are genuinely seeing a battle between these two visions for America. Which do you think is going to prevail? 